The city of Lethbridge got some good news and bad news this month with another good grade on the economic front, but another poor ranking when it comes to crime. Joining me in studio today is Lethbridge Mayor Chris Spearman. So, well, let's uh, begin with some of this uh, crime news here, uh, Mayor Spearman. Uh, McLean's Magazine's uh, annual report uh, on crime. Lethbridge now ranks number 15 on the list of most dangerous places. I mean, to me, I would go, really? You know, uh, but uh, I mean, these are stats, I guess. So uh, any, any thoughts on this? Well, uh, the study comes out every year. Of course, uh, we don't want to see our city's reputation uh, at, I guess, being adversely affected. So, uh, on the on the on the bright side, you know, we've had zero murders for two years. But on the uh, on the ugly side, if you like, uh, the crime situation, which is drug related, uh, continues. Uh, you know, in, it's a big deal in Lethbridge when those crime stats come out. They get a lot of publicity. Uh, I don't like to compare ourselves to other cities, but in places... It's not apples to apples necessarily, right? Not I necessarily. Mean, uh, in places like Grand Prairie uh, and Red Deer, which were ninth and 10th, uh, this isn't as big an issue as it, as it plays in Lethbridge. Lethbridge has evolved from uh, being a large Raymond into being a small uh, Calgary, and we have big city issues in a small city without these supports that we need. We've tried to respond at Lethbridge City Council by uh, making policing our number one funding priority in this budget. So the only things that got funded in the budget were new policing initiatives. Everything else was hold the line. And we were doing reviews. Uh, some of you might have seen uh, the results of the first reviews came out this week. Uh, we have examined eight departments and we'll be looking for opportunities. There'll be another nine departments uh, we'll be looking for opportunities there to save, but certainly policing costs have not been affected. In fact, we're considering uh, adding policing, mm -hmm. and we already pay um, some of the highest costs for policing in the country. So uh, we're, okay. our budget for policing is $35 million, 23% of our municipal budget, and based on 100,000 people, we're paying $350 per person for policing, and that's a very high ratio. Okay, so it's not like uh, for a lack of effort here. That's <laughs> right. We're scoring low uh, in some of these uh, rankings here. As you point out, uh, a bright side is the fact that we have a very low homicide rate in comparison with other cities, almost at the bottom of the pile, which is uh, very good. Now, they had something called a crime severity index. Uh, ours is 159 compared to the national average of 75. So uh, we have the fifth poorest record of uh, reversing a negative trend. So there's some uh, work to do. You know, how do we... Uh, you know, reverse that. Uh, you know, I'm not sure what the solution is. We, we mentioned police, uh, you know, and uh, so that's good. I think more police, you know, would certainly help. And, uh, but is it the solution? I don't know. We all know that it's drug-related crime. Right. And what we need is help from the province of Alberta. We need to have a dedicated federal crown prosecutor, which, which admittedly is the federal government, mm -hmm. but we also need the SCAN units, the safe communities and neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. We need the police with the authority to shut down drug houses. Mm, yes. We need to shut down the drug supply. And then we need the province to provide the supports that are necessary to get people off addiction. So we need to have uh, viable intox, detox. Now, intox has just started. It, okay. it looks promising. Mm -hmm. And we need, we need to be able to transition addicts into treatment and recovery uh, that's barrier-free and culturally sensitive. Okay. So again, a good opportunity for viewers as well in the Lethbridge area here to uh, go to our local MLAs here. Uh, you know, and uh, we've got both the uh, opposition and the uh, uh, party in power represented here. So you know what? Um, it's a good, good place to go and uh, need to keep the pressure up. We do need to see that applied here in Lethbridge because uh, the numbers back it up. I mean, uh, and so many of these crimes, uh, break and enters, exact, you know, assaults, things like that, are related to the drug trade. They, they certainly are. So uh, Calgary and Edmonton have those supports yep. in place. I've said it over and over again. We need one consistent message coming from the mm. city of Lethbridge. When we're uh, blaming other organizations, we're not moving forward. We need to say, here's the assets we do have, here's the yeah. assets we need, okay. and uh, we need to move forward on that. All right. Uh, what's the response been from uh, the public on hiring nine new community peace officers? Is that helping downtown? Because that, I mean, that should help, I mean, to some yeah. degree, right? So we've had the watch over the summer. The yeah, peace yeah. officers just rolled out. It will... 
I believe, help to have more unify, uniform presence. And okay. uh, we, th we believe uh, that th that funding initiative was one uh, that will be successful, but we need to continue. We will monitor it to make sure it is. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we've asked the police to look at other alternatives. You know, uh, can there be uh, other ways to look at this drug and crime issue? The problem is you can't have police everywhere in the city at once. Of it's course. almost impossible to stop crime. Uh, the criminals are always looking to be evasive. They're not mm -hmm. trying to commit yep. crimes in broad daylight. And uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, people are frustrated that uh, the crimes continue relatively unabated and we're having uh, not a lot of success stopping things like break and entries and uh, and theft of goods from, from people's yards. Uh, car thefts are challenging mm -hmm. and uh, we need to make sure that the community's well educated to ensure that mm -hmm. they don't make themselves vulnerable to theft. Right. Okay. Well, speaking of, uh, you know, getting education and so forth, next week is uh, National Addictions Awareness Week, and uh, there's some opportunities for the public to uh, get informed and connected. Uh, tomorrow and Saturday, uh, Alberta Health Services uh, hosting the Opioids Don't Discriminate uh, uh, session all day. It'll be on the second floor at the uh, Park and Ride Transit Terminal uh, downtown, so I thought I'd, uh, you know, mention that anyway. And, uh, hey, why not? I mean, you know, uh, more information is never a bad thing. Uh, so I, I think it's good to put a human face on addiction. Mm -hmm. uh, many people People have strong opinions and many people are very judgmental about the addicts. They don't see it the same way I do because I often meet families who've been affected by addiction. I meet addicts who are struggling to recover. Uh, I know people who've lost family members to overdoses. Uh, it's a different perspective when you know those who are affected. Mm -hmm. So uh, understanding what families are going through, some of that is, is what is going to be on display. Right. And I think uh, if everyone would take uh, time to reach out and understand what okay. uh, the issues are and how families are affected by addiction and looking at ways uh, to address it on a more compassionate level, I think uh, that would help us in our community. Yeah, I know. Well said. I mean, you know what? Uh, that can only help if we begin to understand why this is happening, who it happens to. Uh, people don't choose in one sense to, hey, I want to grow up to be an addict. I don't think so. You know, life circumstances happen. Can I get you to comment a little bit on the uh, uh, Kainai Transition Society Job Ready Program? Now, I understand that the city actually hired 15 uh, Indigenous people with uh, some, you know, challenging backgrounds uh, to work for the city, uh, get some job skills training and so forth, and uh, I heard it went well. Um, is the city going to be doing more of that down the road? I, I think we want to make sure that we give people a chance. We have to be leaders in the community when it comes to hiring Indigenous employees. Okay. I think until recently, uh, we had four Indigenous employees and 1,200 full-time, 600 part-time employees and four out of 1,800 is not a very good number. Right, uh, right. We're, it's not representative of the population of the city at large and it would suggest that uh, there's something that needs to be corrected. Okay. Many employers might take uh, the, same, uh, the same view if the city takes the lead. Okay, excellent. So we can expect maybe more uh, next year as well? Yes, uh, we right. want to continue okay. hiring Indigenous people and we want to make sure that they feel valued and we want to make sure that they have useful jobs. Uh, if they are going to school, getting training and mm -hmm. graduating from programs, we hope that they will all get a fair chance when it comes to uh, applying for jobs in the city mm -hmm. and uh, at the city. Very good. Okay. A few weeks ago, uh, a group of Lethbridge business uh, people uh, traveled together up to uh, Edmonton to meet with some politicians and business people up there. Uh, Team Lethbridge, right? Uh, have you heard, heard anything back there? I know the idea is to promote Lethbridge, make some connections. Uh, had any feedback on that at all? Or? What it is, we, we meet with most ministries in the Alberta government. Okay. And it's great to have eight to ten people in the room, many mm -hmm. of them who are directly affected and knowledgeable of that particular ministry. Right. So we go there without any specific asks ne okay. necessarily, yep. okay. but to talk about issues in the city of Lethbridge. What we wanted to do was say how we can work with the provincial government and help them be successful and then open up the dialogue uh, so each... Uh, individual in the meeting can give their perspective on how they contribute in within the uh, authority of that particular ministry. Okay, so um, down. I mean, obviously, you can't tell you know immediately what kind of results these meetings produce. But historically, down the road, do they? 
produce good things for the city? We, we hope so. Uh, the group's been going since 2007. Yeah. This was the largest group ever. I think we okay. had 55 people on this yeah, mission that's great. in Edmonton for three days. Uh, so three days of meetings with ministries. We were introduced in the uh, provincial legislature. Nice. And so we are the only municipality that does that. Really? And it's important to uh, raise the... Uh, the, raise the image of Lethbridge, raise the reputation of mm -hmm. Lethbridge, build a relationship with the provincial government, and make sure that we are on the radar when the provincial government's making decisions. It's mm -hmm. important to continue, to continue to stress that Lethbridge is the largest city in Alberta after Calgary and Edmonton. And um, <laughs> they, need, they need to remember that in That's Edmonton. We need I to, like it. We need to be on the radar yes. on a regular basis, and people should be asking, how is this going to play in Lethbridge? Oh, and I think that's great. We, we can't continue to have our issues ignored by the provincial government. So Yep, that's good. You've got to make some noise. Hey, and, 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 and some positive news for Lethbridge. I mentioned it earlier. Um, Western Investor Magazine uh, ranks our city as the top city in Alberta, actually, uh, to invest in, and number four in the Western provinces. Uh, is it based on our steady growth pattern here and a solid economic base? Uh, so, uh, I mean, that's uh, kudos to you, I guess, and, and, and the team at uh, City Council? I think many. Uh, we have a great economy based on food, our diversified economy. We need to continue to promote that. Mm -hmm. And we need to continue to build assets in the city of Lethbridge which promote economic development. Things like the airport, things like the convention center, mm -hmm. things that will continue to highlight Lethbridge as a great place to invest. Okay, that sounds good. Christmas fast approaching. Um, downtown Lethbridge is uh, hoping that the Heart of the Holidays initiative uh, is going to draw some people downtown. So uh, uh, lots of things happening. I mean, you got the artificial ice rink downtown. Uh, you want to tell us a bit about all the uh, events that are being planned for the next few weeks? We're looking at new ways of encouraging people to come downtown and support downtown businesses, uh, eat downtown at downtown yep. restaurants. And we want people to feel comfortable downtown. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about how safe downtown mm -hmm. is. We've brought out the Downtown Clean and Safe Initiative uh, with the more visible uniform presence. Uh, yep. That should help. But mm -hmm. we want people to shop downtown and we want to support downtown businesses. We want to work with them. Yep. Uh, you know, I, I'm in the penny on a regular basis. Okay. Uh, yeah. I go to the, the How Sweet It Is uh, candy store on mm -hmm. a regular mm -hmm. basis. I love that little gift uh, shop on the corner called uh, Celia on, okay. and I, I love the downtown restaurants and I think people need to feel comfortable downtown as uh, yeah. maybe as a male I I don't uh, I'm not as intimidated as some of uh, mm -hmm. you know, we're getting a lot of uh, concerns from women sure. uh, about being downtown being downtown alone and I think if people are together in groups, more people in the downtown will make downtown safer. You know, that's an interesting uh, perspective, actually. You, you know, yeah, the more people you have downtown who are, you know, shopping and community-minded, minded, you know, you, I, I guess you displace darkness with light. Exactly. <laughs> you know, in that yeah. sense. I mean, really, uh, you know, practically speaking, I think there, there's some truth uh, to that. Uh, real quick plug here, too, for uh, uh, the city's Nika Yuko uh, Japanese Garden. Uh, they received some good press recently. The North American Gardens uh, Tourism Conference ranked it as one of the top 10 garden attractions worth traveling for across North America. So that's just uh, so, so cool. And the Winter Lights Festival, of course, coming up. And I understand they're going to have some uh, horse-drawn carriages on Saturdays. Uh, very cool idea. So Nikayuku has been uh, very dynamic the last few years, doing things differently. One of the challenges I think Nikayuku has, they had a legacy of 50 years. Yep. Now we're into 52. Wow. But uh, maybe 50 years of doing similar things, people said, well, I've been to Nikayuku. Adding the winter season, yep. the Winter Lights Festival is tremendous. Uh, getting the uh, reputation as one of the top 10 gardens to mm -hmm. visit in North America puts us on a tourist uh, destination Absolutely. map. Absolutely. And we can link that with things like Head Smashed In, mm -hmm. our, uh, our Gulf Museum can oh, benefit, yeah. Helen Schuler can benefit. There's a yep. lot of things in the city that can benefit from uh, drawing tourists to our city. And businesses, hotels, restaurants will benefit as well. Yeah, very good. Uh, you know what, before we close here, I'm running out of time, but I want to put a plug in here too for the 15th annual Mayor's 
prayer breakfast. Uh, this is happening on Saturday, November 30th, 9 a.m. This will be at the uh, Sandman Signature Lethbridge Lodge. And uh, so we want to invite uh, our viewers here as well uh, to come out and uh, join you for this uh, good breakfast. And we want to pray for you uh, and, uh, and get counsel and other leaders here as well, our MLAs and so forth. And, uh, you know, I think we also want to express our appreciation um, for uh, the hard work that you do. I mean, you know what? Yes, we have disagreements, uh, you know, in our city about how we should handle things and so forth. But I can tell you, uh, you know what? It's not easy to be in the public uh, eye. And uh, you are. Uh, and uh, you'll, you'll get uh, both kudos and flack. It kind of comes to the territory. And uh, I think we do need to express our appreciation uh, for the hard work that uh, you do for our city. And uh, so we're going to come out and pray for you there. And uh, I want to invite people. You can get tickets by calling 403-394-7707. Uh, We'd uh, love to see you there. I'm working that morning. I'll be uh, hosting the news, so I can't make it. But uh, uh, I know a, a lot of my friends are, are, are coming out for this as well. So, um, so thank you for all you do for our city. Well, it's all about building community. And it's about doing things together. Mm. And I think that's the, uh, the value of having the group come together to, to maybe reflect on it. Uh, I think the city's become more challenging because of the significant social issues. Yeah. But uh, the only way we'll resolve those social issues is by working together and uh, providing solutions when someone comes up with things like meaningful daily activity, giving people hope. Uh, yeah. it, it's going to take a whole community to do that. Uh, a few politicians aren't going to get that done by themselves. You're absolutely right. It needs to come from the ground up. So, But we do appreciate uh, what you are all doing there. So thank you. Uh, yeah, we're out of time. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Mayor Spearman, for uh, joining us again here today. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, Paul.